All right, so let's go into a 3D view and see what we have there. Now we've got the base for a lighting fixture here. Um, thinking about materials, uh, this is probably made of a, uh, white plastic from what the, uh, what the image looked like. So what we can do is we can go up here to uh, select the object, go to the element properties, and then go to the material. And we see here that uh, material currently is set by category. So we just click here, click the little icon here, and let's create a new material for that. So let's say new material. Let's call this Tarana floor lamp base. What I just like to do with my materials is make them uh, the names as meaningful as possible. That way when they're actually placed into a project um, I can very easily identify what those um, uh, materials belong to. So I'm going to hit OK here. I usually like to say use render appearance for shading so I can just kind of get a visual feedback um, when I'm not in a rendered view of what materials I'm working on. I'll go to render appearance. It's currently set to generic, so we'll hit replace here. And let's go down to plastic. And we'll select a, uh, a white plastic. Let's just say, um, now the, the lighting um, shade was beige, so this is probably going to be uh, probably a beige too. So let's just say um, plastic light beige smooth. Okay. And so we come back over here to the render appearance and we've got some selectors here, plastic solid. Um, in this case, we don't want any of to, to see through it. So we're gonna leave that as plastic solid. You know, it's set to be a single color. Um, it's already pre-configured um, based on this, but we could, if we wanted to, come and change this to be anything we want here. Um, we've got the finish here. We can say matte, uh, glossy. Um, polished. Um, matte's probably fine for this case. Um, if we wanted to have bumps, we could apply a bump pattern, but this happens to be smooth, so um, this material is pretty much uh, how we'd want it to be. So we hit OK here. And then we'll return to this dialog box here. You can hit OK one more time. Now, what I typically like to do is expose the materials to the project so that when we load um, these materials or this family into our project, we'll be able to have control over that uh, material without having to open up and edit the family just to choose the material type. So what I'll go here is and I'll go to the types, and I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually add a um, material and finish um, parameter here, so we can, um, you know, like I said, I'm. Uh, change that material from the project. So we'll go here and we'll see add. And let's give it a name. Let's call this um, lighting fixture base. And the discipline's going to remain common. Type parameter is going to be a material. And then for group parameter under, we'll go ahead and say material and finishes. And we want this to be a uh, instance, or I'm sorry, a type parameter in here. Well, we want to, you know, be, basically be able to change the material on one and have it affect all of them in this case. So we'll go ahead and hit OK here. Once we hit OK there, then we see that we've got a new parameter created here under the materials and finishes group called lighting fixture base. And right now it's set to by category. Here we want to go ahead and select that uh, full line base. Right. So now if we change this to be a shaded, now we kind of see feedback of what we set so far. Okay, so now we're going to flip back to our front view and continue uh, modeling our light here. So um, I think we could probably use uh, revolves or maybe even a single revolve for this entire lighting fixture here. So um, thinking about the construction of this, uh, this lighting fixture. The um, shade here is nothing more than a uh, cloth wrapped around a frame. Um, we don't want to get into the point of over modeling um, the lighting fixture here. So I think what I'm going to do is just create a, uh, a single revolve, um, generally in the shape of the frame, and uh, not really worry about the, the um, you know, the metal framing that's inside there. You know, it's not going to really going to show very much in rendering anyway. So. What we'll do here is we'll do the same thing what we did with our base and create a 
revolution um, and just kind of sketch this thing out. So let's go to solid revolve and let's just uh, kind of sketch out half of the uh, profile like we did with the, uh, the base here. So I'm going to pull this thing all the way down and I'm going to snap this to the, uh, the midpoint of our, our base here. And then let's uh, maybe take this out. Maybe give it a little bit of a, you know, a, a setback um, from the, our base here. Now, these individual portions are curved, so it might be helpful in this case for me to go and um, maybe create um, the horizontal line work in here first. And um, we don't want this lighting fixture to be a solid um, lighting fixture. You want it to, to have uh, just a very, very, very little bit of thickness in there so that the, the light won't be encased in the solid. So what I'm going to do here is maybe just come in here and just draw um, a line representing this little break in the, uh, the shading here. So I'm going to pull this out to maybe here. And then uh, let's, uh, let's draw another line here. Pull that back up to there. So then we'll go in here and we'll create the arc line here from this point to this point here, which is where we've got our setback set at, and then we'll just kind of just pull this back a little bit. And then maybe something like so. One thing I've thought about is um, right now the way that we're, we're drawing this, is, um, when we actually do our evolve, we'll have a um, uh, basically a solid that will kind of be extracting the light from making it to the bottom. So um, I feel like it's probably a better idea to just pull this thing so that we've got it maybe sit like there. So all we end up with is just a little bit of a reveal um, in between each segment of the shade. So what we can do here is take this piece there and we can just copy this up from, uh, say, somewhere in this general area up to the next level here. And, of course, we're going to have to move this out. So we'll hit and move, pull this thing out to, I don't know, somewhere in this general area. And create another arc Oops. from this endpoint here to this endpoint here. Okay, so then we've got our next level there. And just repeat the process up. So we'll copy the next one up. Let's say copy from this point here up to here. Move it out again. So maybe here. Do another arc. There. Zoom out a little bit so I can kind of follow the general pattern there. Just continue copying this up. 